Hello YouTubers, welcome back. I am um, happy to say it's sweet pea and lavender season over here. I've been so ready to do this video for you guys for a couple of days, but we had such a huge rainstorm. Um, I'm actually gonna put in a clip of it in here so you can see how Oregon does rain. It's serious about its rain over here, but it does make things grow real nice. Um, so I'm gonna do a garden tour and give you an update. We do have a few new animals. That would be a helicopter flying right overhead here. <laughs> I have no idea how. I am trying to use my new camera and my new uh, microphone, but I don't, I think it's going to catch the helicopter. Who knows? But I'm looking forward to showing you up close and personal how my big long extended um, chicken pen with the ducks in it it's they so love it and everything is so growing i am gonna harvest tonight too enough stuff to make a stir fry to go with some fresh salmon that my husband um harvested yesterday and the day before and um it's life is just so full you guys know how it is i uh, we had a funeral this morning the sweet sweet man that we've known for years um passed away a few weeks ago and then also one of my friends she got to be a grandma this week. You know, it's kind of that full circle feel. We've had fundraisers for the volleyball program, and then also Tim and I got to go away for our 24th wedding anniversary. And so the garden, it's amazing to me that anybody gets any garden videos done during the season when the garden is on like mad, because when you do get a chance to be in the garden, you kind of have a lot to do. <laughs> so that's been the thing. Um, so I just want to do, I'm going to take you around for a quick tour and then I'm going to do a harvest and show you some other stuff. If I get time, I'm going to tie up my tomatoes because I still haven't done that. Um, things are on the grow. I watch enough videos to see other places. Other places they grow big and fast, big and full real fast. Oregon kind of has the slow creep so we don't get too hot for a little while longer um, and so things will just keep kind of creeping up and growing in and and I kind of like it. I do have to say that some of my flower beds are looking pretty chicken scratched so I'm again really glad for my new chicken pen and it's working um, but it's definitely going to make it so that I have a different strategy about planting um, plants in my flower beds in the next couple of years. So. Here we go, let's do a garden tour. It's good to see you guys. Hey, I'm gonna have to say, this is one of my favorite parts of the garden in the last couple of weeks because the sweet peas are actually growing up. This is the first time I've actually grown sweet peas and I grew them because I saw them on my mom's porch. She has this beautiful flower front porch and um, last year she had the sweet peas and she said they were, I think her grandma's favorite and so she grew them because of that. And look at the lavenders in bloom. It's all purple and so my goal in the end is to actually grow lavender down the whole length of this fence on the outside so that that when that lavender comes on it would just be kind of a purple hue and I had four lavenders that I grew from from scrap from seed this year and of course the chickens got them so um, but it just smells so good I wish you could just see how good this smelled and um, so I do have noodle beans but they seem to have been getting a slow start. They're, they haven't even started climbing the trellis yet. Now I did get setbacks. I've had a lot of setbacks with figuring out that the birds were eating them. So there's actually a couple down in here. There's one right there, there's one over here. So hopefully they'll take up and we'll actually get something to grow on the arbor besides those sweet peas. Here's the tomato row that I actually need to um, tie up. I have my first tiny little fruit. So all of you people who have like hordes and hordes growing, let me show you. I saw one yesterday. Where did it go? Um, oh, I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to find it again. So I might just have to wait because it's, they're not like there's a ton of them. There was one in here somewhere that I saw yesterday and I was like, oh, here it is. I found it right here. Look at, this is the first one. And it's so tiny, but it's there and it counts. And, um, but I have been able to harvest potatoes and broccoli, which I'm so proud of. I wasn't sure my brassicas would actually um, bloom or uh, fruit because I, because of how, like I planted them when everybody said to, but it just took them so long to take off. Um, but here we are. I do have, these are stunted 
But look at these little flowers on here. They're, it's climbing, it's slowly taking off. There's actually one back there too, but they're just kind of a, uh, I'm curious if they'll actually get all the way up the trellis. So my zucchinis and uh, are actually coming. I see I have actual fruit coming on some of those. See in there, little guys, babies. Is there just nothing better than plant babies when you see the fruit? So can you see back here? My chicken pen is actually really successful. So I have a huge increase in the amount of chickens I have in there because I'm trying to do a colored egg basket. So I, um, I only really wanna hold about eight chickens and there's 12 of them because I'm waiting to make sure I have all females, which I'm not sure, I think I have one rooster. He hasn't, he hasn't come into his own yet. And then um, once they start laying their eggs, I can pick whose lays the, the prettier color. But if you can see down there inside the pen, I have a kiddie pool and I turned on the water, it's actually on down there. And the ducks, they just get in there and they splash around, but then they kick up the muck on the bottom and the water just slowly turns over until there's fresh chicken water and everybody's happy. It's just kind of a cool thing. Everybody's happy, I just love it. it makes me so satisfied because I can actually leave them pinned up on some days and not feel like I'm um, um, wasting any, getting any of my plants killed. So again, there's some, squash here that are finally starting to take off it's so weird to me like what's the deal we got these ones that are doing super great and then you got these little ones like i haven't quite figured out i do think that i have um moles that are digging underneath the dirt and they undermine the roots of the plant and sometimes that stunts the growth but look at i got a little broccoli i'm gonna actually harvest this tonight not a huge head but i'll take it it's very cool to me and I planted my brassicas so many times, they're all mixed together. I have no idea which is which. We'll find out. And same with the cucumbers, they're finally starting to come along. I'll be harvesting some beets and some potatoes. And my beans are coming up. So good. Snow peas. I've had so many snow, uh, snow peas. Uh, these are the thin kind, the kind that you put in the stir fry, which is what I wanted last year. I should have planted both, and I think I did. I just think that the robins ate them. So I have uh, down here, you can't see, there's one, one right here and one over there of actual um, melons, but they're getting a slow start, just like everything else. There's a zinnia plant, and nasturtiums are doing good. This is my... Um, Beans are coming in, so we just gotta let them go. They're gonna hopefully get up this thing, which will be so pretty. Just having a good time, it is really nice. I got a little jungly space over here, which makes me happy. The calendulas are blooming. That is um, cilantro that went to seed, which it sure makes the bugs happy, so I've been leaving it. I've harvested quite a few radishes, and I even got some carrots this year which is a miracle because I figured out that the birds are what's eating the top of those. I kept thinking it was slugs, but I got fennel. See, my fennel is happy under there. And then celery. And this is uh, kale, broadleaf kale. And I started harvesting some of my broccoli and, I mean, uh, garlic and jumbo garlic. I left one jumbo garlic to bloom. Can you see the top of it here? I'm curious to see how that um, looks when it's all bloomed out and these are the radishes that went to seed because there's those big um, the big huge radishes and I wanted some more seed so uh, but that's a crazy I've never done seed on radishes before they're like intense and I don't even know how much longer I think they'd have to wait quite a bit longer to get those to dry out and seed pot out so um, hmm, we'll see so uh, having a lot of fun with things. Potatoes are growing good. And then I have, um, in here I have, uh, what are those things called? Uh, pineapple, not cucamelons. Cucamelons are over there. The kind of pineapple, oh geez, I just forgot. I've been looking forward to them. Everybody's, they're the ones that, um, they're in the tomatillo family, right down in here, see? And, uh, oh, I can't think of the name. Silly, silly, silly. I'll probably put it in the video here later. And then I did plant a whole bunch more 
along the back fence here because um, I, I hadn't so I got some different lettuces and stuff because this stays in the shade most of the day so I have some thick lettuces in here and some radishes coming in and I did plant some um, winter squash in there and down here is zinnias and I've been able to see all these are to block away the birds and it's actually been helping um, I, the cosmos I planted a whole bunch and had a whole bunch come up and it looks like I got one that made it through isn't that so crazy like I just keep throwing seeds in the ground and keep throwing seeds in the ground and then the one thing I had to learn about back here though is that the ducks and the chickens can actually reach through and pick apart the leaves so that is the um, scarlet runner beans but they're growing beautifully up this side all the way up to the top and I've actually had hummingbirds come in on the blooms which I just think is so fun when they do that oh I see I grew um, down in here is uh, okra but okra is not an Oregon thing I keep trying to grow okra just because I want to actually taste it and it just does not do very well they're tiny little plants and this one was doing the best right here and now I see that something ate the top off of it hello hello so I got some corn coming there and some sunflower seeds same thing I planted this full of sunflower seeds and those birds are just being persistent so this little netting is actually really helped um, and it's and they once they get tall enough and big enough to hold their own it's not so bad and those are scarlet runner beans and then over here I actually have uh, birdhouse gourds that are gonna grow in which I just think are so pretty even if um, I don't let it go all the way I've had really good su success with my artichokes these ones are tiny you can see they're gonna be tiny so I might actually let them go to bloom because I know they're giant and they're purple and I kind of want to see what they look like um, but I have eaten probably like nine or ten of them off of there and it's just so fun to eat them this one had uh, a lot of fruit on it too so we did that I have some melons here and some peppers the peppers are actually doing good they're just not super super huge but it's early days yet I'll get to go in pepper season all the way through September and into October so um, no hurry this is my cucamelons and um, and they are actually slowly taking off like um, everybody said they were a little bit slow on the go and that's for sure so um, I have a tomatillo back there but there's only one of them and so it's not actually fertilizing which I was curious to see if um, these pineapple whatevers are in the tom tomatillo family I was curious to see if they would be able to get those to um, fertilize you know to pollinate but we'll see so um, definitely have some more brassicas over here that are um, trying to do the right thing there's actually some basil down in here this is basil and this is parsley and chard and I kind of like this jungly look even though some things get away from you and they get too big um, I do have some red cabbages that are actually slowly slowly forming heads and um, I'm actually really excited about that even though they're just starting to get going they might actually bolt before they get there uh, but it's stuff I've not actually been successful with before so I'm kind of excited I'm gonna come in here and actually thin and harvest and pull out a bunch of stuff and I actually heard the people from uh, the UK who have a similar growing zone to me say that they're actually starting to plant their brassicas for the fall and I think that's the case so um, I've planted so many sunflowers and so many um, calendula and different things like that and if they're outside of my garden then pretty much the chickens have wiped them out hollyhocks are just starting to get started here is the I haven't uh, harvested at all I'll probably show you my harvest but this is my first elephant garlic look how huge that is and regular garlics here looking pretty good that's fun fun to fun to grow stuff that you're actually gonna use right and then um, these are bok choys that are all crowded together and I replanted the spinach here and they didn't come up so these were the last of the spinach from last time and they're going to this is gonna go to seed and I might just let it just to see what happens these are a flower 
And then of course a sunflower, one of a whole bunch that I planted in there that is actually gonna make it. And if there was a whole bunch in here, not so much gonna make it. Got a little pea there. So fun, so fun. I'm still enjoying it. I don't, I don't feel like it's all full on yet. Like I feel like there's a whole nother layer of garden that's coming when you know, when the cucumbers are on and the zucchinis are on and you're harvested out. Those are the shallots. Those are little chive onions in there, hiding in there, see? And uh, so I will have to thin things out. I'm, uh, I really enjoy using the potatoes and the mustard greens and all of that stuff. It's been really a good, good time. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I got baby swallows up in my nesting box. Oh, and their mama's just now coming in. See, there's a mama up there. She's hanging out. I can hear the babies in the box. Makes me pretty happy. So very good. Compost piles getting lots of grass on it and so it's melting down. That thing was all the way up to the corner. And it's just melting down, melting down. Let's see if we can actually get this mama on. Film up here. Oh, it's a baby that has its head stuck out. You getting, you getting ready to fly, little baby? Oh my gosh, he's as ugly as can be. Cute and ugly at the same time. Oh. Can you see that? How perfect. Oh. So that'll just be a matter of time before they get out of here. I'm gonna stay here for a second, see if they'll feed him again. Don't fall out of there, mister. Here's my harvest. Got two tons more garlic in there to dry. And then I have beets and broccoli and chard and parsley and basil and onions and garlic and fennel. And I remembered that that plant, I couldn't remember it before, was um, pineapple ground cherries. And I might even try to put some calendula in, in a salad or something tonight too. So pretty, so satisfying, so easy to fall in love with this. Here's another thing I wanted to update you guys. Oh, there goes a dove. The neighbors have been super industrious back here with their hemp farm. And I've been learning a little bit. Hemp and marijuana are two different things, apparently. One is medicinal and one's One's the kind you smoke and one's the kind you get the oils and the medicines out of, so rough version. I think this is the agricultural kind, but I'm not sure. And, uh, but they've been working really hard to plant all of their stuff in here. Uh, so looks different. So looks like a lot of work. It's all the way up there on the hill, way up there, and then it goes way back over here. Oh, I don't think you can see through our trees. But, sure changes the way, what our view looking out. You know, this used to just be brush grown up. But we did have, um, we had one issue from it. So all of the ground cover that was out there made it so that um, the wild animals were displaced, which is a, you know, normal cause and effect thing. Um, and we lost our, we had an old cat that was like 16 years old that had been failing and he, he finally, uh, kick the bucket but then um, we had a young cat who was a major hunter spent a lot of time outside and um, the coyotes that did no longer had their little feast of whatever they could catch over in this field came and attacked our cat and so we lost a, a, a pet isn't that sad so um, since we've lost two cats that just means we get to get two new kittens and one of them is here already. And so maybe I'll show you guys that. Best part of the summer, hanging out. We just ate salmon that we cooked on the barbecues. And then look at my hydrangeas. They got a little uh, beat down in the rain. But aren't they pretty? Just love them, so pretty. 
how big they are. Great color. Here is an addition to our house. This is Debbie's. I think I might have told you guys in, in a passing video. She is in college and she didn't want to wait till she was done with college to start this adventure. So she um, found a deal on line and this lady was moving and so she pretty much got a sweeping deal. But the cool part is the, the big log that's in there, the big log, she actually got from down at the creek and boiled it to kill all of the cooties on it. And she's had it in there for a long time now and everybody's happy. It looks kind of neat in there, huh? Like art. There's all kinds of fish in there. So fun and so pretty. And of course, plants in the, plants in there. So here is our little addition. Uh, kit number one, we're gonna get two. And this is um, Fat Louie, King Louie. And he is just a baby. Say hi. Oh, he's watching the hummingbirds. Oh, they're a hummingbird going fast, huh? <laughs> what do you think? Hmm? Super fun. Babies, always babies are cute, right? <laughs> 